Turner's Travels comes from central Kenya, about an hour southeast of Machakos. And as you can see, I'm in a very quiet, unspoilt, parched, fairly arid part of Kenya. Terrace farming, mangroves, eucalyptus trees, homesteads of small-time farmers. And I've come to the homestead of the Matula family. These are two houses. Mum and Dad, the deceased father, lived here. But I've come to see Peter Matula. I've known him for many years, in fact, since t Christmas 2001. And he's a very poor person, and this is why I've come to Kenya to do a video to show the children in England what poverty in the developing world is. And on our way to meet him, we've come to a water tank which was built in 1986 by Oxfam. But it's no longer in use. It was designed to capture water off the house guttering, but there's a leak in the tank. And these are Peter's neighbours, and here we've got Peter's brother. But I've come to see the star of the show, my old friend Peter Matula. And we'll just hope that he's in. This is the terraced agricultural area of the garden. And that's an outhouse that Peter's had built. And this is his house. It's made of bricks, some cement, tin roof. Hello, is the Matula family at home, please? Ah, wonderful. Ah, Peter, lovely to see you. And your name is? Joy. Joy, smile, if your name's Joy. And this is Mrs. Matula. And this is Peter's mum. And this is... And this is Peter's son. This is Peter's daughter, son, wife, and mum. And Peter is a street broker in Nairobi for the last 19 years. I met him when I was looking for a safari tour company. And he came up to me, he said, do you want to go on safari? I said, yes. And he said, I'll take you to a safari office. And I said, OK, but I'm not paying you, because I get fed up with touts hassling me for money around the world. In Sierra Leone, people used to say to me, hello, friend. And I said, I haven't got any friends. And now even James Bond's copied me with that line. So Peter said to me, I'm not after your money. The tour company will give me a few hundred shillings for extra business if I bring you to them. So Peter was one of the only Kenyans that I ever met that talked to me and never asked me for money. So I began to like him and I started helping him. So if I actually paid him to be with me, to keep me company, take me places. I just found an excuse to pay him because I liked him. He was a very nice person. And this video is for the children in England to understand what poverty is. Because Peter goes up to people who are from foreign countries and tries to be of service to them. Shall I take you to the bus station? Shall I take you to the Akamba bus for Uganda or the bus to Tanzania? And he shows people around. And some days he earns nothing. And it's a hard life because I'm at his village, or I should say hamlet actually, it's not a village, it's near a village, it's a hamlet house. And his wife and family live here. But he has to go to Nairobi and rent a shack, 10 feet by 10 feet cement floor, four wooden posts with a tin roof. He lives in a area fairly close to the central business district of downtown Nairobi and he lives away from his family. He gets up at five o'clock every morning because I do make sure he does get up because I've given him wristwatches to have alarms and he presents himself in the city centre and he might make 200 shillings a day which is maybe one pound fifty and now he's two months behind in rent payments and he pays about 18 pounds a month rent and he has to live without his family and we are in August 2012 and this is the first time he's, he's been back to his hamlet home since last year so I brought him today on the Matatus and 
he lives in Kenya, which is about 147th place in the Human Development Index table out of about 170, 187 countries. There are about 54 countries in Africa, and Kenya is about halfway down that poverty league table. So it said in the newspaper the other day that 92% of Kenyans were very poor. That means only 8% have got a chance to get onto an aeroplane. And this is poverty. There's no running water here. There's a little well down in the valley. They bring it up in containers and they store it in the house. And if you want to have a wash, you tip water over yourself. There's a kitchen where they cook the food on, an, on a wooden fire. And this is poverty. And the world in 2000 wanted to get rid of poverty. It says make poverty history. But poverty is endemic. Two thirds of the world's population are poor. And we in the rich countries do not know what poverty is. I remember reading Roger Moore's biography, and it wasn't until he became a UN ambassador that he actually discovered what real poverty and deprivation was. And it's an education for me to be coming to these countries. I specialize in visiting old countries. Not that I specialize in poverty, but I certainly have learned a lot about it. But I come to countries like this because it is so different to what we see in England. This is what I've told you in other videos. This is the real world. And two, be with these people to bring the clothes over, which you'll see in another video from myself, Nick Chapman, Leon, and my auntie over the years. It's a real privilege to be able to meet these people. And they live in a rustic place. And although it's poor, arid and the landscape is fairly fertile but on the on, on the hand it is still quite arid they live in a property which is though very simple but it's wonderful because most properties in the world do not have views I look out my back garden I see someone else's back garden I look out the front window I see a bungalow across the road and neighboring bungalows but here as you've seen from the panoramic views on this video they're in a beautiful setting it's fairly isolated, certainly quiet, the air is clean, the views are really breathtaking and panoramic. And we're fairly high up here. I had to walk about one mile through the bush, footpaths, crossing ravines to get here. There's no postman, there's no television. So they are a poor family. And poverty was analyzed in 1980 by the Brandt Report, as you've learned in school, Billy, Billy, Billy Brandt, the ex-Chancellor of Germany with retired politicians, prime ministers, presidents, and they studied poverty and they said there was a rich north and a poor south. The rich countries being Japan, United States, Canada, Britain, Western Europe, and the exception of not being in the north was New Zealand and Australia and all the other countries were fairly poor or very poor, especially towards the equator. Although some countries in the poor south have emerged, newly industrialized countries such as South Korea, Taiwan, Mexico, Brazil, the rest of the world <coughs> remains poor. And poverty exists because rich countries and rich people do not want to lose an element of their wealth by giving it away. Companies in Britain make big profits, that's why the likes of Tesco can open up supermarkets in other countries. Imports, bananas, coffee, cash crops from these poor countries, the profits are made in a higher percentage in the rich countries than in the developing countries where the pickers, the farmers, the growers are paid the least. And poverty can only be alleviated if we in the West will trade by giving fairer trading conditions, lifting tax tariffs, paying more for our goods. And this brings us on to fair trade products. I personally don't think I should pay more for a fair trade product in Britain. I think that people who make the most profit along the chain of production to the point of sale should be making less profit. And I hope this video will stimulate anybody who's watching it, particularly school children, to understand poverty and to spend your life trying to find a way how you can help an organization like Oxfam who built the water tower here 
or person to person by making friends with someone else in the rest of the world. And if everybody travelled in the way that I do, my belief is there would be no racism and no wars. Thank you for tuning in. Michael Turner from Turner's